Hey, JC Agajanian here, broker associate with eXp, top grossing agent with the Whistle Realty Group, summarizing for you the mastermind that the Fast Forward Network put together for us each week. Let's get straight into it. What's happening? It's time for another Monday morning mastermind recap with the Fast Forward Movement. And today we had only two questions that we covered, uh, but they're good ones and we dug in. So uh, let's go. First of them, uh, they're both kind of familiar questions and topics you probably talked about before. So uh, the first one, USPs, or Unique Selling Propositions. So the um, question was about, you know, what your 60-second elevator pitch is, what are you doing to compel people to want to work with you as opposed to someone else. The other one is uh, regarding video creation. Um, and the person wanted to move in the direction of equipment and tech and tools, but most people moved that conversation to the actual content question around video as opposed to the actual mechanics of it. So let's get straight into both of them. First of all, um, if you only had about 60 seconds to pitch your value proposition, what would it be? So um, the first person to chime in is from North Carolina. He's got, uh, I think, the top real estate handle in that city on Instagram. So he's got a lot of cloud, I think 17,000 followers, something like that. And logically, he said, let's go ahead and lean heavy on social media um, because he specifically has that unique selling proposition. He uses it and says, hey, I can get you in front of significantly more people than any other realtor here in North Carolina, or I don't know what Charlotte, if he's in Charlotte or in some other area. But um, basically, that was something natural to him that he leans on heavy because he's put a lot of work into building that social media handle. So he uses it as a unique selling proposition. And you're going to run into a theme um, with some of these things as far as that goes. A lot of times people pick up what they've already done or what they're already doing in their business and they name it and they make it their unique selling proposition. Um, Kurt Wanabo is actually from here in San Diego. Um, he is a huge producer with his team and he has created 25 of them actually that he expects all of his agents to know by heart and then he doesn't just ask them to regurgitate them to every prospect right he wants them to go deep in and to focus on probing questions so that they can pull out of the hat the right usp that matches that client in the situation that they're in um, Dan Beer spoke up as well, one of the founders of the Fast Movement Forward Movement, and he said that uh, whatever it is that you are using as your unique selling proposition to remember the hero story. And what he means by that is um, tell a story of how whatever is applicable to that prospect or client um, is, is needing to hear a story about how you've had that in the past and more importantly, how it doesn't really set you up as the hero in the story. It sets up that client as the hero. What clients want is to be led. And so you are the guide in that hero story, the situation where, you know, I guess the general theme of the hero story is that there's a problem that uh, arises and that the guide comes along and suggests solutions and then walks them through that. And the and the client comes out victorious, achieving their goal in the end, right? That's the hero story. So the idea is to remember that we are the guide, not the hero. Clients need guides to get through this process. Otherwise, they would just do it on their own. We wouldn't have a profession. So remember that we are the guide in this process and use storytelling to mag magnify that USP that you're talking about. So that's a, that was an interesting take on it. Um, Aaron Clapper up in Manhattan Beach selling really expensive homes talked about how um, they outwork their competition. Um, that's kind of a very simple, very old school way to do it, but he backs it up by saying, um, you know, if you're talking to a buyer like, hey, you want to live in this area, we are going to actually get out here and knock on all these doors and he'll pull up a map and say how there's 250 or 500 or 1,000 doors and they're going to go hit them all. Um, and he does the same thing on the seller side. Hey, Mr. Seller, look at this map here. We're going to individually, door by door, knock on a thousand doors, and we're going to invite every one of them to the open house that we're throwing for you. So he, his big unique selling proposition was that we outwork our competition. Um, and then he backs it up with actually doing the work because people can see his team in the, in the field or he provides some sort of feedback to them as well. Um, Kim Meeker is up in the Temecula area, and 
she talked about uh, one of hers being five big reasons to work with us and then um, following the same mentality that Kurt was using, which is, you know, moving in first and instead of just spitting out information, really focusing in on what's important to that prospect because you may have five good reasons to work with us, but if for some reason or another, that person has kind of discounted a few of them in their mind and they're really concerned about this other one, well, you need to know to speak to that because they don't care and they don't need a bunch of information thrown at them. They need to know what matters to them because frankly, they don't really care what we want or we want them to do or how great we think we are. They only care how we can help them with their specific concerns. And so we have to remember that. Um, and then Kyle, uh, brought back the idea that I mentioned before as far as uh, doing, uh, bringing up things that you're already doing. So he was like, hey, which of you people on here would, um, you know, fight somebody if they wanted to cancel because it wasn't going well and tell them, no, nope, you're stuck for six months no matter what. I don't care what you said. You sign the contract you're in and nobody raised their hand. Because most people, if they're in a bad situation and, every, you know, you do enough deals, you're going to come across this time to time you take your lumps and you say, okay, that's really crappy, but uh, this person and I didn't work out, they're gonna move elsewhere. So instead of just saying, okay, that's kind of part of my business and if I were to run into a situation like that, I would just deal with it, let's go ahead and name it. So we actually have within our company a cancellation guarantee and we put it in writing and we add a couple terms and conditions like it doesn't happen on the spot you got to give us you know a couple days to try and make it right for you be open-minded to let us work it out and if then it still doesn't work out no problem so we're not gonna hold you to it we're just gonna let you move on with your life so adding in a cancellation guarantee which is something that you're gonna do anyways creates another one of those unique selling propositions that you can stack onto the list of the others. And if you're in a moment where someone maybe is hesitant to sign or something like that, they have a, an issue with commitment, you could say, hey, do you know that we have a cancellation guarantee? You could have any kind of concern, no questions asked, we're gonna go ahead and make it right for you because we don't want you to be in a situation you're not happy with. We want you to be happy with our service so we put our money where our mouth is. You could really fab it up or feature advantage benefit talk about how great any one of these USPs are to that client, especially if they are already concerned about that thing, going back to what's most important to them. So those were some really good um, talking points on unique selling propositions. Moving on to the next topic for today, uh, video. Question was about what systems, tools, specific products you're using, and then kind of an afterthought was what about the content? So almost everybody moved on to the content because you don't need a mic like this. You don't need headphones. You don't need a DSLR. You will be just fine with an iPhone and a pair of AirPods. Like whatever you have will be great because in this day and age, especially with the way Reels are and TikTok is, it's supposed to look homemade. So you can just lean into that as far as social media goes. Um, or even with your YouTube clips, if you're making videos to send out to your database, it doesn't have to look super polished and pro. Um, so they kind of discounted the idea of focusing in on which mics and which, you know, all the different gear. I mean, talk to any videographer, they're going to have thousands and thousands of dollars in gear. That's not necessarily where you need to spend your time and energy. We need to spend our time and energy into getting um, content out and we need to focus on quantity over the quality, which is unique and feels weird to say, but that's the story. You need to get out as many clips as you can and it will add up over time and you will create uh, a backlog of content full of hashtags, searchable items, and things where people will find you in the future. So, um, Colton Whitney out of Colton Whitney out of Orange County uh, piped up and just said, hey, let's research and develop it. Or, <laughs> sorry, that's the real meaning of R&D. What we say for R&D is rip off and duplicate. <laughs> so, let's R&D it um, and it basically see Who's doing big things in other markets? Do what they're doing, right? Um, follow mortgage, real estate related posts and handles. Um, people that are, you know, having huge audiences and put a lot of time and energy into exactly what to say. Let them do the effort. If that's their thing, if they are a huge content creator with thousands and thousands of subscribers, they're probably spending a lot more time and energy to figuring out what to say on their next clip than you are. So let's follow them. Um, Dan Beer went on and said, uh, that's 
huge and he does that. He also said, let's take a step back and say what kind of conversation are um, people having in general right now, right? So right now it seems like interest rates and inflation are some of the most <laughs> highly talked about items in the market in general, let alone the real estate market. So let's go ahead and speak to those issues and how they relate to what you're trying to do inside of real estate. Lauren Taylor, she is a boss when it comes to TikTok and all things social. She's uh, constantly putting out content and she reminded us that no matter what you're doing in your content, there's a, a very high likelihood that you're not making the most use out of that clip. For example, I am making this recap video after spending an hour on a mastermind and breaking it down into a five to 10 minute clip for you. Well, even within that five to 10 minutes, I could pull out if I have an editor, if I have the time to do it myself, lots of little 30 second to one minute clips that can turn into social media reels or various other things like that. So she's saying you need to make sure that you maximize everything you do and spread it out across all the platforms so that you're not spending all your time trying to figure out how to make this stuff so that you make the most of the stuff that you do make. Okay, so that was one of the big lessons um, that she put out. She also said to take a look at Pinterest. Apparently, there are a lot of content ideas on there and it'll tell you what's trending. I haven't logged into my Pinterest account for years, maybe a decade, so I may have to dig out that password and figure it out, but that was an interesting one to check out. Um, she talked about uh, pulling down everything you do, making reels and TikToks out of it. She mentioned something called repurpose.io, which actually does that for you. If you make a TikTok, for example, it will go ahead and strip all the branding so it doesn't look like a bunch of TikTok stuff on there, and then it pulls it down so that you can go and make a reel out of that, or you can go and put it on a YouTube short or whatever else you want to do with it. So repurpose.io was a very interesting one that I hadn't heard of that I'm going to have to check out myself. Um, let's see here. She also talked about... Um, making sure that you save your clips, especially this is more TikTok specific, but in the past, up until now, there's just been long, you know, mashes ups of, of letters and numbers to make the title of your video. They're finally getting to the point where they want it to be geo uh, searchable and searchable in general. So they're now saying, just like in YouTube or any other clip, let's go ahead and make sure we name these things correctly and add the right hashtag so that it's searchable within TikTok. She also mentioned something called Metrical um, that she uses to go ahead and schedule those posts after she has uh, repurposed them and pulled them down and, and schedules them out to go when she wants them to. So that's how she's able to be as prolific as she is posting multiple pieces per day. It's because she's reusing the content she's got and she's using tools and I think a virtual assistant to uh, get all the stuff out the door and up to all the different channels. So that was really interesting because she is getting a lot of traction. She has um, a lot of clients that come to her through her social channels, and she has also uh, connected a lot of agents with a great team in their area through the same uh, way. So she's getting a lot of traction from it. Um, what else we had? Uh, let's see here. A, a guy named Ben piped up with a great idea that I thought uh, I should probably implement myself, which is basically to document your real estate journey. So. How long have you been in the business? How did you get into it? What are some of the peaks and valleys of your career? What times in history were that? Can we relate? Was it <laughs> the downturn of 09? You know, what is it about you that's brought you to this point? Make a video about that and then, like we're talking about before, chop and, and, and crop it up and use it for various pieces going out the door. Um, another idea that Andy, who I mentioned earlier, um, with his large social media presence in Charlotte, said that um, whenever there's anything repeatable, if you get the same question asked twice, let alone three or four times, if you have to say the same thing, informing a new seller or a new buyer about some element of the business, make a clip about it. Record it, and now you can either just point people to it. If you like, get a question, you're like, hey, you know what? I actually get that question all the time, and I'm, it happens so frequently, I made a video about it. Here, check it out. You can also break it up, use it for socials as well. Um, and then Lauren Ro Rosen, who said she, I think she said she sold her first home in like 93 or something like that, been in it for a long time, um, said that you have to keep that long-term perspective in mind. We're all talking about hashtags and tools and tech and everything, but this is not going to happen overnight. The, the, the 
point is to get creating, get content up now, increase the amount of content you're going, and just know that it's going to be a long-term play, that it's not going to happen overnight, and you're not going to be collecting referrals and new, new clients like Lauren is overnight. It's going to take some effort, just like nurturing a prospect or farming for sellers or anything else in our industry. It seems like everything is a lot of uh, heavy lifting until it really feels light after after a while. So um, that was an interesting one as well. Uh, Kyle, uh, at the end of this uh, topic, pop piped in and said that he, there's a website called answerthepublic.com. I hadn't heard of that one either. Really good. I guess you can type in keywords or ideas and it will tell you the most commonly asked questions, most searched Google terms, um, things that people are actually caring about and looking at. So you can go to answerthepublic.com and check that out. Um, great ideas for content. Um, he mentioned TubeBuddy, which helps you to, str str you know, str str strategize on, um, you know, titles of video clips and which hashtags to work and whether or not it's going to be uh, better than some other set that you might be thinking of. It's a great tool to help you with that. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. You know, oh. He, he also added the idea of really just taking some time to look into um, who's dominating YouTube, for example, in other markets. So like we are here in San Diego. So he just quickly on the Zoom pulled up uh, something in Dallas, I think. And then, you know, who's the top guy in real estate making videos there? And there was one with, you know, tens of thousands of views and it's like okay this guy's killing it look at his page he's got tons of them you can go sort by most popular which of his videos are the most popular and it was common stuff like uh, I don't know he was comparing one part of town to another part of town which is better and then there was some interesting um, themes of saying hey why shouldn't you move here and just various video topics that you can easily say hey that's a cool idea and that's something that is equally applicable to my area let's just go ahead and put it in, in my voice with my perspective and s area specific to where I live and make the same type of video. You're not completely ripping someone off, but what you're doing is not reinventing the wheel. wheel and that's where that R&D idea comes in. So I hope that's helpful for you. Two great questions that we went kind of deep on, USPs and video creation. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to chat. Send me a DM and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you found it valuable and that there's something in there that you can implement into your business today. Uh, if you'd like more information, I'd love to be a resource for you. I'd also love to connect you with the mastermind directly if you'd rather see that instead of catching my recaps. And if you're interested in joining the Fast Forward Network, DM me here and I'll hook you up. Talk to you soon.